Anyway, it's great to be back. I'd like to welcome everyone. I'm really happy that you could all be here today with us as we um, explore what's been going on in the world in the last two years. Um, I'm not sure about you, but I've certainly learned a few things over shutdowns. I've learned a lot about um, the various levels of shutdowns, stage one, stage two, modified stage two. Quite frankly, I'm completely lost right now. I think we're just open now, but I'm not really sure. I'm also learning the Greek alphabet, Omicron. Next, pi, 3.14. We're almost there. It'd be really kind of ironic if they do call it on Pi Day, which is March 14th. Anyway. I digress. But the thing I think I've learned most about the industry over the past couple of years is what the construction industry has really done what it always does. It's continued to work together. They've continued to recruit and train new workers. They continue to build buildings, transit facilities, office towers, hospitals, high-rise residential centers, distribution centers, just to name a few. They continued to do that work. And they do what they always do, and they always do it well. They assess the hazards and risks. Certainly at the beginning of the pandemic, there were a lot of new things that we had to look into. How are we going to work on site? How can we have a bunch of people together in the same room? They assess those risks as they do on every job site, and were able to mitigate those risks and hazards and continue to build. Um, today, I'm happy to share some findings of our 2022 contractor survey. Um, you should have received that. I believe they're out on the tables this morning. I want to talk a little bit about what happened in 2021 and then end up with a quick short-term outlook as to what we can expect over the next couple of years. So 2021. Um, you know, COVID was a big deal for all of us, but not so much for construction investment. When you look, um, it's the wrong slide. We'll step back a bit. <laughs> um, Construction industry is very strong, uh, representing about 7.5% of the Ontario's GDP. I actually expect that number will up, bump up when we get our 2021 number. This number is from uh, May of 2020. It's only updated on an annual basis. So in May of this year, I expect that number will actually bump up closer to about 8% of Ontario's GDP. Employment, about 534,000 workers are employed in Ontario's construction industry. That's across all sectors of construction, um, including estimators, skilled tradespeople. It's the entire gamut. Um, that number is nearing uh, the peak that we had back in 2019. Unemployment rate is dropping. It dropped to, on an annual basis, about 4.4% in 2021. And there's a total of 138,000, just over 138,000 construction business establishments across Ontario. Um, that this data is separated out to those with employees and those without employees. Um, certainly those without employees is the bulk of it. Um, but that number has actually been declining over the last couple of years. And I think that has a lot to do with the pandemic. So those sole practitioners, independent operator type people, weren't really able to cut it during the pandemic, so that number did decrease modestly. And we are with about 50,000 um, construction companies with employees. Now we can talk about investment. In 2021, investment reached about $117 billion in the construction industry. So really, as I was about to say earlier, COVID really hasn't had much of an impact on the levels of investment in the construction industry over the last two years. In fact, they've been increasing. The $117 billion investment in 2021 is about 13.5% higher than it was in 2019. The number in 2020 was also higher than it was in 2019. A lot of that activity is coming. We heard from Stuart this morning talking about government stimulus, investment by the government, putting money into the, the various sectors of the economy. Well, they certainly did put a lot of money into the infrastructure sector. So in that engineering sector, that's really been driving the total construction investment over the past year, as has the residential sector. Um, at about 50% of the uh, total investment in residential, that market has also been very strong. ICI has sort of been maintaining its own over 2019 and 2020. Um, 2021, we started to see a modest uptick. 2020 was a little harder in the ICI sector. That's where we did experience some shutdowns from government-mandated shutdowns. As well, the commercial sector 
was probably one of the most um, impacted of all sectors in the economy with the shutdowns of restaurants, hotels, retail, offices. So work in those, construction work in those facilities really didn't happen as much as it might have if it had not been for the pandemic. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the labor market. Um, we heard Stuart this morning say invest in people, and certainly that's something that I think we in the construction industry would certainly support. Um, as I mentioned, construction employment had a big impact in 2020. There was a drop. You can see um, it's probably most evident in the unemployment rate. You see the spike in 2020. That's as a result of some of those government shutdowns, a decline in the number of workers in 2020. But we've recovered. We're almost right back where we were in 2019. We're only a, a few, maybe 6,000 short of where we were in 2019. And I expect that recovery to continue. One thing with this graph that I am a little concerned about is the labor force number. So that's all the people who say they work in construction, whether or not they're employed or not. That number has remained fairly static. In fact, it's come down since 2019. And in the last two years, it's been relatively static. So unless that labor force number is going to increase, if we've got employment increasing, those two lines are going to merge and we're gonna have even lower unemployment rates going forward. Um, currently, I mentioned unemployment at 4.7%, and that's almost at the low that it reached in 2018 when it hit an annual rate of 4.4%. So let's talk about what contractors have to say. As you know, each year we go out to the contractors um, across the province, in every region of the province, and we speak to them, ask them questions about what they think their views are for um, work opportunities in the coming year, what are their concerns, what's keeping them up at night. And this year we asked them about some of the tactics and strategies they're using to, to make their businesses thrive. There's 500 contractors that we survey. Those contractors are predominantly in the ICI sector, but we do also allow people who are working in that high-rise residential sector to answer our questions, because many of those facilities are also multi-purpose um, or multi-use buildings. 34% um, of the respondents this year were general contractors, and about 60% identified themselves as trade contractors. We do go out to the entire industry, so it is both union and non-union. We do want to get a certain number of unionized contractors to respond to the survey, so we do continue surveying until we reach that threshold. And then we actually do look at some of the differences that we see between the union and non-union sector, but quite frankly, there aren't that many differences, and if there are, I'll sort of highlight some of those differences as we go through. So here we're looking at contractors' outlook. So what was their outlook? We asked the question, do you expect to do more or less work or about the same amount of work in the this coming year. So we're out in January, we ask them this question. Overall in the province of Ontario, 36% of, or sorry, 36 of contractors expect to do more work in the coming year, and just under half of them expect to do about the same level of work. When we asked the unionized contractors, their response, there was slightly less in, in saying they would do more work. I think that number came in at about 32% expected to do more work. But more of them said they expected to do the same. So overall, it kind of washes out in terms of expect to do more and the same. I think probably that is because I think a lot of contractors in the unionized sector were pretty busy in 2021. And so to be taking on even more work would be a, a, a bit of a stretch for them. The other difference this year that we noticed, usually every year there's one region that's um, not really following the, the provincial average. This year, pretty much everyone's in tune. They're all within, you know, between 30 and 38% expecting more work this year. So that was an interesting observation we had, and again, gives us um, further strength that we think that the province as a whole is anticipating a strong 2022. Um, Eastern and Central Ontario came out top in terms of their expectations for more work with 38 and 39%. Interestingly, Central Ontario was one of the weaker regions last year when we asked this question. They weren't expecting 2021 to have been a strong year. The GTA also, last year, more contractors expected to do less work in 2021 
than they, they did the previous year. So they were really, I think, spooked by what was going on with COVID. Um, this year, they're much stronger with 36% of GTA contractors expecting to have more work in 2022. Southwestern and um, Northern Ontario are the weaker of the two, but again, it's not really to say that they're weak. Just about a third of contractors there are expecting more work in 2022. So overall, I do think that the contractors are telling us that it's a fairly strong position that they're facing as they move into this um, year of work. We like to ask them these um, questions each year. It helps give us a sense of how they're achieving their work. Where is their work coming from? We ask about the region, and as you can say here, it says 85% um, of contractors work within the region. That's generally what we get. But I like to ask that question just in case there is going to be a change or contractors are seeing a change within their region. It might be an early indicator that things are slowing down in a particular industry or in a particular region. Um, most of the work is coming from repeat customers, um, even split on whether it's achieved through bidding or privately won or sole sourced work. New construction is much stronger this year than it has in the past. Usually it's either a 50-50 split or slightly higher on the maintenance side. This year at 55% of the work coming from um, new construction, that's the highest percentage that we've ever achieved when we've asked that question. So what are contractors' concerns? What are keeping them up at night? And I think Stuart gave us some insight um, into that in his presentation. Uh, the top two areas of concern, cost and availability of materials, and the availability and quality of skilled labor were overridingly the top concerns contractors spoke about. And in fact, those um, concerns were rated as a seven out of seven. So we asked them to rate their concerns on a scale of one to seven, and over half or close to half of contractors gave those concerns a seven, and that hasn't happened in the past. Usually it's a six or a five, it's rarely a seven. Um, so you look at the intensity of concern on the side here, so that's looking at the mean score of the seven points, so material cost being number one at 5.8, availability of skilled labor at 5.7, availability of materials, 5.6, quality of skilled labor, 5.5. So clearly, materials and labor are on contractors' minds. To get a sense of how contractors are doing financially, we ask them about their, their income and the revenue that they're receiving. This year, 40% of contractors said their revenues in 2021 were higher than they had been in 2020, an increase of about 2% on average. Last year at this time, 56% of contractors, so over half of contractors, expected their revenues would have been down um, at this point in time last year. We asked them to look forward to the, the balance of the year. What are their revenue expectations going forward? And here, 52% of contractors are saying they expect their revenues will be higher than they were last year, and about 33% said the same. 12% certainly said that it would be lower. And again, at this point in time, last year I was reporting numbers where contractors were expecting their revenues would have been declining. Average increase is about 10%. We started asking this question last year about their, the gro their growth of their business. So what's their business trajectory? And given the pandemic, we wanted to see, okay, what are, you, what's your, what are your growth prospects? Is your business growing? Is it staying the same? Is it declining? So what were they thinking right now? And what did they think prior to the pandemic? Prior to the pandemic, in both years that we've asked this question, about 60% 60, 60 of contractors said their business was growing. Um, this year, when we've asked the question, and the bar is looking at, the darker blue bar looks at, this year's answer, the lighter blue, is what they told us last year. So this year, 34% of contractors are saying their businesses are growing. Last year, only 12% said they were growing. In fact, last year, almost a third of contractors said their businesses were in decline. So again, we're starting to see some improvement as we're moving further away from the pandemic. We're not quite at that 60% that they said pre-pandemic, but we're moving in, that, in the right direction. 
So we asked um, contractors, do they plan to hire more workers? 43% of contractors said yes, they expect they will hire more workers this year. Um, I think it was up about 6%, they'd be increasing their staffing levels, or sorry, 8% that their staffing levels would be up this year over last year. One question we wanted to further probe this year was what are their approaches or tactics for um, attracting, attracting and retaining workers? What are they doing to get workers to come to their company or to stay with their company? Number one answer, 77% of contractors said they, they're raising wages, giving people more money. Um, number two was promoting employees to higher paid classifications. Number three, improving benefits. Um, we had a list of five or six things that we asked them, and it's in the, the booklet that you have. But we also asked a follow-up question in case we didn't think of all the things, the innovative ways contractors might be using to, to attract workers. And so we asked them to just give us some other tactics that they're using. Someone said, signed up with a union. Others, using training and education to further educate their employees to, to encourage them to stay on. Taking on more apprentices offering some flexible work conditions, and improving company culture. And I thought that was interesting when Stuart was talking about that this morning, the importance of improving your company culture to create uh, that new generation of workers is looking for that, that company culture to, to be able to stay with the company. We also wanted to know about project disruptions. Um, we did a series of surveys in um, 2020 and ended with our survey last year in January during COVID asking about a variety of questions how COVID was impacting the companies as they were going about their day-to-day -day business. And we used to ask about project disruption. So we asked it again. 52% of contractors are telling us that they've had projects postponed by the owner over projects that were to take place in 21 or 22, that those projects have been postponed. About two-thirds of those have already been rescheduled, so that's positive news for the industry. And 38% of projects were cancelled. And when we asked why the projects were cancel, outrightly cancelled, material cost was the number one reason that they gave us. Most of all these issues were related to cost or to COVID. Um, lack of funding, changing in priorities, other reasons that um, or owners gave for cancelling projects. Supply chain disruption. Stuart talk gave us a, an excellent explanation about, about why we've had challenges over the past couple of years to get the, the materials that you need to build. I've heard endless contractors talk about the challenges that they've had in getting materials. I was one of those people who wanted to build a deck in my backyard, but did not because of the price of, of lumber there. Um, but we're seeing contracts, 77% of contractors said they've had significant, experienced significant challenges with their supply chain over the past year. Um, we asked them what they are doing to try to manage that or to mitigate that risk. 80% said they sought alternative suppliers. 73% um, quickly bought or accelerated the purchasing of materials as soon as a contract was awarded. Two-thirds specified alternate materials actually within their contract documents, and 63% of contractors were stockpiling materials just so they had materials just in case they were going to need them. Overall, we asked contractors, you know, are you positive? We know they're expecting more work for their individual organization or their individual company. What did they think about the overall um, outlook for the industry? 82% said they were very positive about the industry. Here we've got just some final, some comments from the various people. The moment the industry is booming, there's more work out there than contractors. There's been increased health and safety. People thought that was a positive um, aspect of what's happened over the last few years. Someone indicated some of the fly-by-night companies have been weeded out, that they're no longer in the industry. Um, there have been a variety of incentives from various levels of government to, to increase work in construction. Um, so they're seeing an upturn in work. Some contractors, not everyone has been busy. Someone was stagnant over the last 18 months, but they're starting to see things improve. Um, so just some of the positivity that we saw from various contractors in our survey. So I'm just going to switch gears here now and, and give a, a little bit of an outlook. 
Um, we work with Build Force Canada. Um, many of you will have heard of Build Force. They do an annual construction looking forward outlook for the industry. Um, it's a collaborative effort that they undertake. They um, certainly have, hold a number of uh, webinars over as they're trying to finalize their survey or their forecast and to really fine tune those labor market um, numbers so that it, it makes sense to the industry. So OCS participates in that and provides some uh, project data to help fuel that, uh, that forecast. Overall, I think the fundamentals for the non-residential construction um, industry are quite strong. As I said, COVID didn't really impact investment um, over the last two years. And I think with the investment from, that we're seeing from government on the engineering side is a positive thing for the industry. And I think going forward, we will see some increases in ICI sector as well. I'm getting a little ahead, and, but we'll see that later. Here is the, the project pipeline. There's certainly a long list of projects that are driving activity and construction. Um, I've grouped them by type. So transit projects across the province, about $60 billion worth of work. Primarily that's taking place in central Ontario and the GTA, but there are a few projects outside of those two regions. Utilities work, um, a lot of that is driven by the nuclear work that's currently going on. Healthcare, $20 billion of work across all areas of the province. Numerous hospitals are be build, being built. There will also be an increased focus on long-term care work coming out of the pandemic. Government buildings, there's about $11 billion of projects, worth of projects in government buildings, some in Toronto, certainly a lot in Ottawa. Roads and bridges, mining, there's about $8 billion of work in the mining sector in Northern Ontario. And there's a whole slew of projects that aren't included in this number that are still waiting to, to be firmed up before they get captured into this scenario. And manufacturing and distribution. We've seen certainly a lot of distribution facilities go up over the last couple of years. And that will probably continue as we continue our obsession with Amazon and they need to get distribution centers closer so we have our, our service, our products the next day. I'm not sure why anyone needs to order something and have it the next day, but they can do that for you. Here we're looking at just total non-residential construction investment. Um, it's projected to increase by about 12% from 2021 to when it peaks out in 2016. You see the forecast period in that shaded area there. So looking like some pretty strong growth into 23 and then kind of leveling off, but at remaining at that high level. Breaking it down a little bit more, we're looking here at engineering and ICI building. The top line is the engineering sector. So you see it's been quite strong growth since 2019, um, largely driven by all the transit projects that are happening. Um, mining and utilities, wastewater are also remaining at high levels um, and certainly contributing to that growth. It's expected that after 23 it'll peak and then moderate modestly, but again, staying at that high level of activity. ICI buildings in the red line just below it, you see that sort of more modest growth in the 2020 to 2022 but then we take a bit of a steep curve upwards out to 24, and again, remaining fairly strong for the next several years. Breaking down ICI, this really shows that a lot of that activity is coming from the institutional sector, so that's the gold line at the top, so that's government investment into hospitals, long-term care facilities, schools, universities, colleges, those, that type of work. Um, that's projected to increase about 34% from um, 2021, so up to its peak in 2024. The commercial sector, which is the red line in the middle, it sees some fairly modest growth. Interesting um, Stuart's comment about ESG, so that's the environmental, social, and governance thing. It's a, a big lingo in the, um, the real estate, commercial real estate markets. I was on a call recently with um, CBRE looking at their forecast for that commercial market. And they say that they, the question about are workers going to go back to offices or not, that, you know, 
Hard to say yes, no, but they are pretty clear that it's not going to be the same. So yes, some workers will go back to the office, some will not. But those commercial buildings that are out there, anyone who wants to get workers back into the office, they can't be the same old commercial buildings that they were in the past. So there's opportunities there for them to enhance those buildings, to make those buildings more people friendly so that people are encouraged to go back into those units. So I certainly see an opportunity there for the construction industry as that commercial and office market tries to attract workers back and they have to renovate their buildings, as well as retrofit for greenhouse gas emission, another area of work opportunity within that commercial sector. Industrial investment has been actually stronger, fairly strong since 2018. It's been growing. There have been a number of projects in Sarnia. Um, that have been driving this activity. Um, some of those projects are now finishing up, and so that work is going to start to, to come down a little bit and stabilize over the, the balance of the forecast period. So what about construction labor markets? According to BuildForce, the industry needs to attract an additional 50,000, almost 51,000 new workers to the non-residential construction sector to be able to meet demand. Um, we know that we're having about half of that number is to replace workers that are retiring over the next seven years. Um, so there's, we've got our work cut out for us to be able to get those workers. Um, and this is happening across all regions of the province. It's not just one region that we need to, to be concerned about and to think about this. So we are needing to focus on this and continue to attract workers into this industry and to get our fair share of workers so that we can meet our demands going forward. Mobility, of course, is always an option, but as all regions are firing, it's hard and not necessarily guaranteeing that you'll be able to get workers from another area of the province where it's less busy. In the survey, we talked about some of the tactics that contractors, and I, I reuse that word purposefully, the tactics, some of the, the ways they're, they're approaching workers to get them to stay. And I, I treat those as kind of short-term methods. They're not sustaining. You can offer people more wa wages, but you're really just you know, taking a worker from another organization and pulling them over to your organization. You're not creating a new worker for the industry, and it is new workers that we need. So we need to use those in the immediate time frame um, to meet immediate demands, but we need a more coordinated approach going forward to be able to get the workers into the industry that we need. Um, some of the strategies I think we, we certainly are already utilizing and we need to continue to explore is local recruiting and training with a particular focus on um, traditionally underrepresented workers who aren't usually in the construction industry. So the work that Kayla's group is doing with women is excellent because that's bringing workers into the industry, new women into the industry, who maybe came for a year or so and then left or didn't come at all. So tapping that new workforce is an excellent opportunity for us to increase our, our numbers of workers. Certainly immigration is another area. I'm looking to other industries. I think that happened a fair bit early on in the pandemic. I think there's a lot of people who used to work in restaurants who no longer work in restaurants and have chosen to find other careers. So certainly we need to continue to do that, as well as in immediate and dire needs, um, bring workers in from outside of the province or the country as required. So what are the risks going forward? And there's always risks. I think, um, you know, Stuart, did an amazing job today. He sent me his presentation on Thursday last week, and you know who knew, you know what all was going to happen in Ukraine, and now the impact that Ukraine is having on the the economy going forward. So we're in a very dynamic time right now in the world, and there's so there's certainly lots of risks to the forecast. But in Ontario, I think we can be safe to say that construction will go, continue to thrive over this next year. Um, current level of capacity of contractors, so will all of the work that is out there, will, are there sufficient contractors to do that work? That is certainly a risk, I think. Um, some, some of that work may not happen in 2022 or 2023. It may get pushed out another year. So you may see that forecast that we had that went out to 27. That number might continue to be at a high level going further out as we um, approach 2030. 
Pandemic restrictions impacted training. So that is a concern I have and a question I would have for the training community. I know they still managed to do training over the last two years, but not at the same levels that they've had in the past. So are we getting fewer apprentices in over the last couple of years? So are we already a little bit behind the eight ball because we weren't able to bring as many, as many workers in as we would have normally over the last two years? Um, our survey also noted, and it's in the book, it wasn't in one of my slides, but we asked contractors, do they employ apprentices? Um, this year, I think the number was about 60% of contractors said they employed apprentices. Uh, last year, it was around that same number, but previously, that number was closer to 70%. So is that a pandemic impact, or is it something else that contractors aren't employing apprentices? But certainly, we've seen a downward trend in that. And of course, supply chain, that's always an ongoing challenge right now. So how are contractors managing that supply chain and how will that impact projects and project costs going forward? So what are my key takeaways, I guess, for this year? Uh, contractors are certainly positive amid all the ongoing challenges that they've had to, to manage with respect to COVID. There's an abundance of work and um, there's supply chain challenges. But all in all, they're very positive. There's over $140 billion worth of projects out there driving construction activity in Ontario, and we expect to see the non-residential investment increase by about 12% over the next seven years. Certainly, we need to keep an eye on some of those smaller projects. Ontario, we're quite different than other provinces. We have an awful lot of small projects in Ontario, and those projects start to add up. So we need to keep our eye on those smaller projects to make sure that we're able to, to service those projects as well. Um, ret the retrofit market, that's something at OCS we're looking at. We're working with um, a group out in Vancouver looking at that, that green economy and retrofit market and we'll have more to say about that later in the year, but certainly that is a, an area everyone, it seems with everything else going on, it's kind of taken a back step, but, but certainly environmental challenges are still there and we do need to address those. Um, labor supply ultimately will continue to be challenged at peak times over the next couple of years um, in all regions of the province. Um, and all trades. It's not every trade at every moment in time, but there's certainly, when you look at build force, they rank on a scale of one to five. There are an awful lot of fours and fives over the next couple of years um, in every region of the province. But I think on a positive note, the industry does have the, the skills and tools to manage these. Our next panel, I'm excited to hear what they have to say. Um, as to how we can work together to, to address some of these challenges going forward and to make sure that the construction industry in Ontario continues to thrive.